Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brian Custer. You know, roses are red, violets are blue. Don't let the wow pubes wreck you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and our sponsor at Manscaped, they are here to help you with the best tools to get your balls ready for that very special occasion. You know, the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped, it is just the thing that every guy needs in their life to make sure each and every day is a little more special. Now, the number one product in the package is the Lawnmower 4.0. That's the electric trimmer. It's designed to trim hair on loose skin, and the trimmer's advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate balls. It even has 4K LED spotlight, so you can shave anywhere your heart desires. And I'd like to propose, really, making February 13th a national holiday. National Shave Your Balls Day. And I think this is the one holiday that both men and women can all get behind. The package also includes the Weed Whacker, the nose and ear hair trimmer. It whacks all of the worst weeds you have, stuff up in here and, of course, in your ears as well. And to complete the perfect package for your package are the liquid formulations like the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. These formulations, I'm telling you, will have your balls smelling like a king on that big day. Manscaped created their products for a night just like this and will make your V-Day date say, you know what, honey? You got a great set of balls you got there. I'm telling you, go to manscaped.com Last stand for our exclusive offer and 20% off plus free shipping. I'm telling you, your lady will thank you. And again, 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com slash last stand. Join Cupid and shoot your arrow with Manscaped this Valentine's Day. It's the last stand. And here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is The Last Stand. I'm Brian Custer. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And joining us once again is a man who is the former welterweight champion of the world. He's known as one time. Keith Thurman is back on The Last Stand. One time. It's been a while. How are you? Welcome back. I'm great, man. Happy New Year. Nice to see you, Brian. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. Listen, you haven't fought. I, I, I looked it up. One time hasn't been back in the ring in two years. Uh, last time we saw you was that Manny Pacquiao fight. Why? Why has it been so long since we've seen one time? Well, you know, the main blame is COVID. The second main blame is I had one small opportunity to hop into a, into a fight, and it could have been a legitimate tune-up fight. It was without fans, you know. It was one of the. It was when they just started PBC back in. I got the phone call. Do you want to do an in studio fight? And mm, I was I was timid. I was timid to jump on that boat. And then after that boat sailed, uh, I didn't get a phone call again. And uh, and of course we started to see the sport pick back up. And then I'm looking at it like, yo, where's the Walter Wade division? I was trying to get back uh, at the last quarter of last year and I uh I worked the Pacquiao fight in Las Vegas came home with COVID so that set me back that I couldn't take a, a November December date I got pushed more into the January and we fell upon February 5th so that's really to round everything up man that I, I only had one small opportunity to to get off my butt but even that fight I think would have been in 2020 and not uh not in 21, but obviously if I would have got the ring rust off, they probably would have circled me in. But you know me, I like to make great fights. I like to make big fights, um, exciting fights. And of course I have this February 5th. And then from there, you know, the sky's the limit. And, you know, I believe that this year, finally, Keith Thurman can do what Keith Thurman does best and bring some exciting fights back to the Walter Wade division. How, how bad did COVID affect you? Uh, it just... I was really bad for like two days uh, and then doctor gave me some medicine and slowly but surely body aches went away. Uh, but overall, it took about two weeks to recover. 
uh, to test negative. Like they keep telling people quarantine yourself for two weeks. It did take two weeks to test negative. I tested like, uh, eight days after or something. I was still positive. So I took the whole two weeks. Then after that, I tried to jump right back in the gym and the first week was rough. Uh, so after three weeks, I felt back to who I am as a person, Keith Thurman. I can do my cardio. I can do my strength work. And I was back living it up. So you, you mentioned it, February 5th, man. You've got Mario Barrios. Barrios making his debut uh, at welterweight. Why Mario Barrios for your return? Well, I was given a few names. And Barrios had the best record. You know, um, former world champion. I'm a former world champion. Uh, I, I don't even think the other guy was a former world champion. Uh, so it just seemed like the better name. Uh, no matter what, you know, we're always going to catch a little criticism. If we're not fighting the top guys, they're always going to wonder why you pick this guy, why you pick that guy. So that question is always going to pop up. But he's got one loss. I got one loss. He's stepping up into Walter Wade division fighting Keith Thurman. That means he wants to make a name at 147. That means he wants to redeem himself and he wants to put himself back into championship contention. You know, he doesn't just want to slowly move into the Walter Wade division. He wants to make a big splash, you know, and I respect that, you know, and fighters who are coming off of losses are dangerous, you know, because you don't know where his head is at. That's why we're doing an interview right now. You don't know where Thurman's head's at. Been out of the ring two years, this and that. You don't know the drive and the focus of a fighter coming off of a loss. Is he still down in the dumps? Is he still not put the pieces of the puzzle together? Or did they sharpen up? Did they go back to the playbook? Did they look at the mistakes? Did they analyze what they did in camp and what they can do better? You know, um, uh, a, a great fight in remembrance was when Victor Ortiz fought Marcos Maidana, right? The dude post-fight interview sounded like he wanted to retire, go to Hollywood and do all that dancing with the star stuff that he, he eventually did. But it sounded like boxing wasn't for him. That He made it a clear statement. Made Oscar De Los Hoyas face like, shut up, stop it, <laughs> you know? And what happened when uh, when... Um, Victor Ortiz came back and fought Andre Berto. Everyone thought, oh, Berto's got a devastating right hand. He's going to rock him just like Madonna did. And he got him, but Victor got him back. And Victor showed a lot of heart and a, and a lot more willpower and that the warrior was still within him. So the warrior is w within me. The warrior is inside Mario Barrios. And that's why February 5th is going to be an exciting night of boxing. Yeah, I agree with that. Who was, who was the other guy you were contemplating? Um, uh, he's on the card, you know, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind mentioning names. Um, Abel Ramos. Mm, got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, you know, last time we mm -hmm. spoke, it's, it, I think it's shoot. It may be a year ago now since the last time we did this, man, you, you were telling me just really how bad your hand was messed up. Even in that Pacquiao fight where you were like, Hey, look, I mean, I, I mean, you see, I couldn't really even throw that that left hook and things of that nature. We had talked about your elbow. Uh, is Keith Thurman finally healthy? That's the one positive thing of all this downtime is, you know, surgeries take time. So let's just say it takes eight to 10 months. Eight to 10 months post my surgery of the Pacquiao fight was long ago. It was, uh, it was really... Uh, about May at the when, when COVID hit. So when COVID hit, that summer, I was fully recovered. And that's why I probably should have took the uh, in-studio, no-fan fight, but it, it wasn't exciting to me. You know, um, I love the sport of boxing. And, you know, uh, I have the luxury of sitting back from that Pacquiao fight. Should I have done it? Probably not, but I, but I did. That's all in the past, you know, but I didn't beat myself up. I haven't had lots of fights. I haven't had lots of, um, unnecessary sparring. Um, 
and were just not injured. The the elbow surgery, that happened after Danny Garcia. That wasn't even an issue in the Pacquiao fight. So luckily, I don't have injuries that keep reoccurring. My injuries are healed. And, you know, this hand is solid. You know, you might not be able to see on the camera, but I, I ended up getting uh, – you can see the scar yeah. tissue just yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. You know, so I have so I have staples in this hand. I have two staples. It's a bone fusion. You know, the beauty of the bone fusion is the doctor guaranteed that what was happening was there was a collision and, and one of the bones was sitting on top of the other bone and they kept calling it protruding. It's a simple, fancy word for sitting on, on top, pushing above. Right. And I had a big lump sticking out. And I could see it pre-fight, all camp. I could see it after sparring. It would swell up a little bit more. It was constantly there, you know. And now, instead of instead of something that's protruding, if I look at my hand, it's almost indented. You know, my bones are back in place. And I'm very happy with that because now none of that is on, on my mind. You know, I fought with injuries many times. And a lot of times I'm able to put it in the back. But this one... The left hand was just so predominant that it was on the forefront of my mind. It was on the forefront of my mind when I fought um, Jose Cito Lopez. It was on the forefront of my mind when I fought Manny Pacquiao. And it was it was hard. I, I heard from the doctor, Keith, you need hand surgery. And I said, Doc, I need to go make money. I, I didn't want to be that guy who's out of the ring with his elbow, out of the ring because of his hand, and then, you know, where where did Keith Thurman go? I was the unified, undefeated welterweight champion uh, before all these things happened. So it was um, it was very tough. Plus, it's hard to accept the doctor's word. This is a simple surgery. I'm going to cut your hand open. I'm going to put pieces together, and you're going to be okay, champ. That sounds nice. But if I'm not okay, I want to use my other hand and hit you upside your head you understand doc like this is my life you know and i literally like i almost threatened the man i'm I, wow. probably scared him he he's probably never worked with a professional fighter you know i scared my barber once he took my beard he took my mustache down way too low and i said bro i asked for a fade but now i'm about to fade you you know so you know some, some sometimes I, I can take it a little too far you know but but in this case there was a reason why I had fear because I love boxing. I want to continue. Luckily, I'm still here, 33 years old. You know, we're getting some age, but we're not we're not pruny. We're not too old. We're not too old to get in here and rumble. That's another reason why I'm happy to fight Mario Barrios. He's a younger man than I am. He's younger. He comes with speed, talent. He had a great performance against Tank Davis before he was taken out in the later rounds. And I just want to see what else he can bring to the table. He thinks he's going to be bigger. He thinks he's going to be stronger. He thinks he's going to be better on his body to compete at welterweight. And there's no better test than the Keith Thurman test. I love it. I love it. You know, and and here's the thing I love I love about Keith Thurman. You ask him a question, he's going to give you the truth. So I, I, just reading up on just different stuff about this fight and Keith Thurman, there seems to be a perception out there from the boxing media that one time – is washed up. So answer me this. Is Keith Thurman still a major player at 147 pounds? Tune in February 5th and find out. That's what I'm here to do. You know, um, I love I love where I'm feeling right now in camp. You know, uh, my body is just feeling tremendous. My my diet, you know, you know, I'm a little bit of a philosopher. And there's one saying in, in Buddhism, which is, to know the way and to not practice is to be like a spoon in a soup and not taste the flavor. Okay. So I know the way of a champion. So for me to not apply that, you know, is foolish is simply foolish. We we've, we've done things in the past. We've, you know, the word I'm looking for is complacency. Okay. So this happens amongst many athletes, uh, but especially in boxing, it's hard to control a fighter, right? You, you know, sometimes you got good camps, good people around, really lock in the fighter, you know, but that's one thing that we love about boxing. Look, 
Look at how Mike Tyson was. You know, look at how flamboyant certain people are. Look how people run their mouth. Fighters are not easy to control. They're very independent. So once when we get to a certain level, there's that there's that demon coming in. It's like, oh, you good, champ. Oh, you got it, champ. They can't beat you, champ. Nobody got you, champ. You know, you got that little guy, you know, and and it, it, it brings in complacency. You know, you're able to afford steak and lobster seven days a week when once upon a time we know where we come from. We didn't see steak and lobster like that, you know. So now you got surf and turf every night, you know. Uh, you might have found a woman or you might be out there chasing all the all the tail that's wagging around there. You know, fighters are uncontrollable. OK, it's the discipline that we establish unto ourselves. You know, that's what we loved about Floyd Mayweather. You can say what you want about what he does here and there, this and that. But the dude was like jogging to the strip club and back. You know, like who does that? <laughs> who does that? You know what I'm saying? He's jogging to the strip club and back. He had a he had an OCD. If you ever heard him talk, he was over compulsive. He never wanted anybody to work harder than he worked. That was a certain discipline he instilled into him, and he never let. And everybody was around him. Yeah, champ, this champ, that champ. But it was the inner voice that said, "Nah, I know I can get God. I know I can get get God." And I have to do what it takes. You know, I have to walk the way of a warrior. I have to walk the way of a real champion, you know, and that's all I'm trying to do this year, man. Um, I believe that Keith Thurman has everything that it takes to be back in the number one position. You know, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, you know, they never fought Keith Thurman. You know, Keith Thurman never fought them. So you can say what you want to say, but Styles makes fights and I'm a devastating puncher. I'm an intelligent boxer. And I do believe that I bring a lot to 147. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Tim Bradley was asked about, about your fight with Mario Barrios and Tim Bradley said, ah, Keith Thurman, let me tell you something. Keith Thurman is just about the money. The guy is a mercenary. He just wants cash. His cash has run out. That's the only reason why he's fighting again. He's got one foot in and one foot out. It's a shame. What's your response to that? Man, Timothy Bradley don't know nothing about Keith Thurman. You know, Timothy Bradley ain't never been to uh, Florida. He never been to my side of town. We've never talked person to person. You know, you know, Brian knows more about Keith Thurman than Timothy Bradley. Okay, so I don't really take his words to heart. You know, mercenary. Of course, I want to come in here and I want to drop bombs. You know, so part of his statement might have some facts to it. You know, but outside of that, one foot in, one foot out. You can't box like that. You know, look, if I'm not in the ring, I don't need to have a foot in the game. So my foot's out. But the moment I start camp, it's two feet in. You know, I start this camp. I'm on a mission. I believe that this is the year, 2022. I believe this is the year that we have an opportunity to bring all the champions together. And I might not be a champion, but I'm going to reestablish myself in position to fight these champions especially the undefeated champions like um, Bud Crawford and Errol Spence. I want to be the one to defeat them, you know, or at least put on one of the most exciting fights of the year. I'm telling you, this is what I do. How can, how can I do that? I was one-handed. I was one-handed fighting Manny Pacquiao, and it still was one of the most exciting fights of the year, okay? So I just really don't understand Timothy Bradley, I don't know his perception of who I am, and I'm not here to fix it, okay? At the end of the day, I I hear a lot of background noise, but I don't take it into my heart. I have goals. I have dreams. I aspire to be something. The story of Keith Thurman is still being written. You can call it the final chapter. You can say that we're near the end of the book. But that doesn't mean that my heart, my soul, my blood, my sweat, and my tears will not be behind me. They will not do everything I'm putting in behind this fight, you know, behind this camp. Because what bothers me the most is you think you know Keith Thurman when I beat Danny Garcia. That wasn't the real Keith Thurman. You think you know Keith Thurman when I fought Sean Porter. That wasn't the real Keith Thurman. You think you know Keith Thurman 
after he got knocked down and got up and went toe-to-toe with Manny Pacquiao. That still wasn't the best Keith Thurman. And I will not finish my career without performing my best. I got to, oh, I'm not afraid to let it go. If you can beat me, beat me. I said that. I said that. How any other fighter say it? I said it, okay? I've been beaten one time. Will I ever be beaten two times? And understand that in my heart and my soul, I'm still undefeated. Because I might have took the L, but this champion right here has never suffered defeat. Is there a fighter that can defeat Keith Thurman? I don't know, but I would like to find out. Mm. We're certainly going to find out February. Uh, You mentioned Sean Porter. Uh, He has his own podcast, and he said, listen, Keith Thurman needs to come back and fight like he used to. I think the inactivity has somewhat ruined his career. Uh, Is that a fair assessment? Uh, I mean, to a degree, you know, you get a little rusty. I knew I wasn't my best self uh, against Jose Cito Lopez. But a lot of that and all of 2019 was not just inactivity. It was the left hand. So in this camp, I'm able to do strength, conditioning, work on all my power punches, my angles. And really, I just have a different mindset. I have lost something. I've lost my title. I'm now an ex-champion not a current champion, right? I lost something. So we're striving to gain something back, you know? So the old Keith Thurman was the Keith Thurman that wasn't a champion, right? The old Keith Thurman was calling out everybody, you know? And I'm more in that mindset. I do believe that I am a deadlier fighter when I strive to achieve and I'm not already there, you know? So I do believe that I have a lot to show this year. For a lot of people that doubt, I believe that there's a lot to show. I believe that I'm fully capable of doing it. And I look forward to uh, reawakening people and getting them very excited about the Walter Waite fights uh, that have a possibility of manifesting uh, this year, 2022. You talked about uh, calling people out. I know you had uh, some back and forth with some fighters. Uh, let's start with uh, Leonard Ellaby, Mayweather Promotions, and Tank Davis. Uh, we had Tank Davis on the last stand, and I, we, I certainly asked him, hey, look, was that a fight that you were serious about or wanted to take on? And Tank's response was, quote, as far as boxing-wise, he's getting old at boxing. Come on, bro. You got to be active somewhere. He's not even worth mentioning anymore. Nobody's worried about Keith Thurman. Come on, bro. Your time has passed, end quote. Uh, what's your response to that? You know, it's easy to say when somebody's inactive, you know, you can pull that card, you know, Um, but it's not over till it's over. I've never announced my retirement and Tank and all world class fighters should know every world class fighter should know every day of my life. I'm one day closer to my next fight to the day I retire. That's just how it is. You know, we're warriors. We're gladiators. You know, gladiators were slaved. They were slaved to the to the entertainment. They were locked up. They were back there, you know, but they knew that eventually they're going to get out this cage. They're going to fight and they're going to be fed good, you know, and then they're going to get to celebrate and then they're going to get put back and they're going to be waiting, waiting, waiting. So I've been caged up. That don't mean I walked away from the game. I've just been caged up. February 5th, the gates open. Thurman's back. Say what you want to say. February 6th, come at me. Love it. Uh, Last time we talked, you know, you had some words for Terrence Crawford. And I know you guys had, you know, your camps had talked initially. Um, You know, he became the first person to stop Sean Porter. What did you think about his performance? I predicted the punch that would stop Sean Porter. Um, You know, it still was impressive since nobody's ever done it. Um, you know, I think ESPN is a a big hype network. Uh, they, they said a lot of comments throughout that night that, you know, might do whatever to the casual fan, but it don't do nothing to to people like you and me or people who really know boxing. You know, you made a quote, I'm gonna make a quote on ESPN that night. They said, this is the best and the greatest Sean Porter we have ever seen live. That was not factual, 
Okay. You know, I believe the best Sean Porter performance was um, against Errol Spence. You know, I just think he really dogged it out the whole way he got dropped. But, you know, the way he fought that fight, the way he opened and the way he closed, I mean, he just was really strong. It reminded me of, of our fight. But in our fight, I was able to actually get him in that later half, similar to um, uh, to Errol Spence. And that's another thing that you can say. You know, he, he felt he lost to Keith Thurman. He got dropped by Errol Spence, and then he got stopped by Crawford. You can almost say there's a progression there. You know, I don't, I don't mean to do that to my boy like that, but you can almost say that there's a progression there. So like I said, man, I'm not here to discredit the, the one thing nobody else ever did. But after it was done, and the commentators want to say, oh, the welterweights are now moving up to 54, because that was terrifying. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's not terrifying at all. You know, uh, if anything, it's inspirational. Uh, it's an achievement. Congratulations, bud. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? But do it to me. Uh, do it to another one. OK, there's a reason why Sean Porter did not beat Keith Thurman. There's a reason why Sean Porter did not beat Errol Spence. Do it again. Do it to another one. All right. Come on, man. Uh, it, it is what it is. That's all I got to say on that. Uh, uh, the the one thing that I thought was interesting was that now that Bud is a free agent, he's talked about now fighting Keith Thurman. Uh, is that a fight you see happening in 2022? It's definitely a possibility. I don't have a belt. I want a belt back in my possession. I have to go after those who have the belt, you know, uh, and the way it is for me, I want the biggest, most exciting fights. You know, last time you saw me, it was Jose Cito Lopez, Manny Pacquiao. I did that whole thing injured, but I thought that those were the best fights that I could make. And I made it a point. I told people I didn't explain that I was injured. I wasn't going to put that out there like that. But I told people I'm not fighting Errol Spence. You know, I'm not fighting the undefeated champions this year because I wasn't going to step to them knowing I was crutched. I wasn't going to step to them, you know. So now... After February 5th, I'm willing to step to any champion. You know, I do business the way that I do business, which means we can talk as much as we want. We can do interviews, shout out each other's names. I want to see the contract. I want to see the writing. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the pros, the cons, the stipulations, and see if this is legitimate. When people say, is this legitimate, is it legitimate? Because once when it's legitimate, I don't hesitate. I'll change a few lines, but I don't hesitate, and I sign on the dotted line. I make great fights happen. That's what I do. I've done it throughout my whole career, and that's what I plan on continuously doing uh, here in 2022. That's why Thurman's back. There's a lot of great fights that can be made, but you put Thurman in the mix, and I think they're even better. Uh, I, I know you told Fight Hype last year that uh, you didn't know who Jerron Boots Ennis was, which shocked a lot of people in the boxing uh, media. Uh, do you know him now, and uh, do you see that uh, as a fight in the future, Keith Thurman and Jerome Boots Ennis? So you love me for my honesty, right? So let me break down for, for those who can keep hearing this young man's name and a lot of things in the future. Yes, I know who he is. Yes, he's a great fighter. He looks tremendous. I love his style. It's, it's a beautiful boxing style. Now, I told you a few lines before, Thurman wants the belt. Thurman wants the champions. Booch just happens to be that, that generation behind this generation, right? So these guys are going to fight it out. And Boots is going to be right at the edge, at the, right at the cusp, similar to where the position I was in when I fought Diego Chavez. And I was the number one contender for the WBA world title. Who had the world title? Paul Milanagi. What happened to him? He got beat by Adrian Broner. What happened to Adrian Broner? He got beat by Marcos Maidana. Okay, can I fight Maidana? No. Why? Because Maidana fights Floyd Mayweather. Now, Floyd Mayweather, okay, even better. Now, Thurman's the mandatory for Floyd Mayweather. Oh, wait, a few months go by. Floyd's elevated to super champ. They take me from an a interim to a regular champion, and I learned pretty much overnight, you're never going to touch Floyd Mayweather. 
okay? I have no intentions of doing that to Boots Ennis. All the intentions that I have is to fight the champions that are in my sight. From there, I'll hold on to the belts. And if the young man is still there, still undefeated, wanting to fight, then it's a possible fight in the future. And I look forward to it. Love it. Uh, for every, You know, everybody who comes on the show, we allow people to submit uh, questions um, through social media. Man, we got so many, so only, I can only pick a few here for you. Uh, the first one says, uh, from Twitter, when it's all said and done, how do you want fans to remember Keith Thurman? said and done. I just want fans to remember that Keith Thurman is one of the most exciting welterweights in the welterweight division. You know, my favorite thing is when people come up to me and say, you are my favorite fighter, you know? Um, and you know, it's, I know once when I touch a fan like that, it's not from what I say, how I say it. It means that they appreciate boxing and they really like my style. They like what I bring into the ring. Of course, they like the way I break things down. And I, I just love that I have an opportunity to live and do what I've always wanted to do. That's why I wear red, white, and blue. Because I'm living my American dream, being a professional athlete in the beautiful sport of boxing. So, you know, of course, my ultimate goal is to unify and be the undisputed welterweight champion. We will have an undisputed champion this year. You know, I, that's what I believe, you know, and if you could say three belt, four belt, whatever, that's all going to manifest very soon. And I look forward to being a part of that, you know, being the, the winner of such an event would be my dream come true. But just being able to compete at the highest level of boxing is already my dream come true. So when it comes in remembrance of Keith Thurman, I just hope you remember how many great fights that I put out there for you. I hope you just remember that I was very exciting. And I hope that when you compare me to other fighters in the future, you know, you're able to say, man, you know, but if Thurman got, you know, with this fighter or that fighter, you know, I'd pick Thurman. You know, I just, I just love support, man. So as long as you support me and I'm getting love, that's all that matters to me. Uh, Lord from Twitter says, do you plan on retiring at 147 or will you move up uh, in weight before you're done boxing? That's a good question. I always ask myself that question. You know, um, let's just say if I'm still fighting at 37 years old, you'll probably see me at 54. And even if I don't have many fights there, your boy one time might have to do it one time. <laughs> uh, Chuck from Twitter says, will you take the Terrence Crawford fight next summer? Well, now it's this summer. This summer, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. If that's what's presented to me, I would love to take the fight. I'm open to fight all champions. Uh, this one from Twitter as well. It says, uh, uh, one time, why did you ask for $10 million to fight Bud when you haven't made that much in previous fights? False lies. Um, Bob Arum is a notorious liar. And, um, and how do I know? Because we never ask for anything, okay? We don't put a number out in negotiation. You see what number they bring to you in the table. And his number was, you know, I, I, I should have said 10 million because his number was so low. I got to bring it up somehow. You know what I mean? I should have said 20 million just to piss him off, <laughs> you know, but we don't say numbers. We don't like to say numbers, you know, so I never gave him a verbal statement. He came out with his own verbal statement, maybe because we gave him no number. He's assuming that I want to make, you know, 10 million dollars. You know, I want I want a respectable contract. I want to get presented with a contract with a purse that's respectable at the time of negotiation, you know, and I was not presented anything of that nature. And that's why the fight didn't happen. James from Twitter says, hey, uh, Keith, do you really think you can hang in there with the likes of Spence, Crawford and Ennis? Oh, of course. You know, those are uh, tremendous fighters right now in the welterweight division and you know, it's all about the skills, the tactics. Um, I can go blow for blow with anybody. And then from there, you know, it's boxing, baby. Hit and don't get hit. It's the fundamentals, you know. Um, you know, I definitely, you know, I'm looking forward to stepping in the ring. 
I'm always willing to give it a try to do my best, you know. So, like I said, win, lose, or draw, I'm living a dream to fight the best fighters in the world, for the for them to understand that you can't be the best fighter in the world if you don't beat Keith Thurman. Who are you? Who are you? If you how are you the best fighter in the world and you have not defeated Keith Thurman? That's honesty. That's not biasing. That's just real. Uh, we got like fifteen of these questions. It's 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 all it's already what I've asked you, but it says Keith, do you know Jerron Ennis now? Moving on. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this one, too, you've already <laughs> answered. This one's from Andrew. He says, please be legit on your answer about your hand and elbow health. I wish you nothing but the best against Mar Barrios. All good, man. We're really looking forward to being exciting. I'm really looking forward to outperforming the expectations that are being put on Keith Thurman right now. Uh, you know, let me ask you this real quick. Uh, how is being a father now? How has that changed you as a fighter? I mean, it's giving me insight and wisdom that I can barely begin to understand uh, or, or express to you. So the one thing, the big takeaway in the eight, eight months, baby girls, eight months now, right? The big takeaway is how we grow as human beings with baby steps. So many people want to achieve. So many people have these goals, these dreams, admirations desires you know want to make all this money they want they want to achieve so much baby steps baby steps they take you from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow that one right there i mean it's 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 really been hitting home lately because camp happens day by day it's it's a progression week by week it, that you should see your fighter should look like a rising stock. It should just be getting better and better and better, you know? And it's day by day. It's staying true to the regiment, but it's because you're doing it in time. You're not trying to achieve something overnight, you know? So in relation to watching her grow for eight months, standing up, crawling, rolling over, you know, grabbing objects, her hand-eye coordination, everything that she's been doing. I mean, she's evolved so much in eight months. Baby steps. That's the takeaway, my man. Love it. All right, we've come to the last segment of this show. It is the, called The Last Stand one time. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. Just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Yeah. What's a more challenging fight you think for you? Uh, is it Errol Spence Jr. or is it Bud Crawford? Oh, it's hard to say. They're both they're both like southpaws. Uh I'll just I'll just say Bud because he switches. So we don't know which Bud Crawford I'd have to fight. The right handed Crawford, the left handed Crawford. You know, we'll just have to take him as he presents himself. So that's a little bit of a curveball. They're both tremendous fighters. Um they both have their own challenges, but I'll give it to Bud for that reason. Keith Thurman aside, who's the most dangerous fighter right now at 147? Probably Boots Ennis, you know, because he's just in that young, you know, rising, hungry dog wanting to take a bite out of everybody. You know, it, it makes a fighter very dangerous when they haven't achieved all that they want to achieve. So he's, he's never been in that complacent um, atmosphere yet. Uh, he's striving for greatness. And I believe that that makes fighters very dangerous, and he has skills and talent. Who do you think is pound for pound the best fighter in the game right now? Oh, uh, we were just talking about that the other day. It's hard to pick, you know. Um, you want to throw a name out like Canelo, you know, um, and and then it's weird because you normally don't go pound for pound with a heavyweight, but you can argue it's Tyson Fury. It's 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 very it's very. Uh, interesting, you know, pound for pound is just one of those opinionated uh, brackets anyways. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I say like off the top of my head, those two names rise to the top. Uh, what is the one thing that you haven't done yet in this sport that you still want to accomplish before you're done? I have an opportunity to compete uh, for the undisputed welterweight title of the world. Hmm. Love it. Uh, last but not least, when will one-time Keith Thurman become world champion again? 
this year, baby. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. We're not here for fun and games. We're not here to collect checks and be a mercenary like Timothy Bradley said, you know. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to collect checks and, you know, pick up some some runts, you know, some some small military men, the pawns and everything. But we're not here to fight pawns. We're here for the kings of the division. I love it. And I tell you what, you got Keith Thurman taking on Mario Barrios February 5th. Listen, I love it. When one time Keith Thurman is active and back into the game because the sport is exciting when one time is back in the mix. That's right. And right after this, we're going back to the gym, baby. <laughs> Believe that. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. I love you one time. Thank you for doing this. Uh, that's what we do here on The Last Stand, folks. We bring you the biggest names in the sport like Keith one time Thurman. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.